Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the opera. We are very excited to welcome you here again tonight. It is night 12 out of 24 where we are trying to save the opera by doing it all at once. Um, <laughs> tonight I know that many of you are very, very sad because Denmark lost at handball. So I'm going to try to cheer you all up with a little story of death, uh, betrayal, and incest. <laughs> I know it'll do the trick. Um, a special treat for you ladies and gentlemen tonight, I'm not wearing any underwear. Um, <laughs> Actually, that might not be so special for you, but it's very special for me. Um, the thing is that, um, you know, the, I am, in fact, uh, the mother. I represent all mothers, and naturally all mothers in opera, and I don't know a better mother than the Virgin Mary, and of course the Virgin Mary doesn't wear thongs. Um, so I will happily wear nude thongs, but actually I ran out of nude thongs, and I realized I was wearing a pink thong. And the Virgin Mary, she certainly does not wear pink thongs. Uh, I don't think that they had those back in Bethlehem or Jerusalem or wherever the hell she came from. Um, and uh, so I just thought that I would just go, go Rambo today. And, and you know, ladies and gentlemen, I know that you all think it's really appropriate for me to begin every opera performance talking about my own genitals. And um, that's what we do here. So uh, <laughs> with that, um, I would love to uh, hear a few words from our intendant. I hear she's coming live via satellite. Oh, there she is. Uh, <laughs> Professor Dr. Dr. Helena Hopsasa, hello, and thank you for joining us once again. Thank you for having me. I, uh, uh, what do you, what would you like to tell us about uh, the opera tonight? I know that this is a, a favorite of yours, Yanufa by Jana Czech, uh, Czech, Czech composer who wrote a lot of Czech operas, and we're doing them here, at least this one, because it's very spicy. Uh, yes, I am very fond of uh, the Czech language. I find that it's very exotic and... Uh, it absolves me of the need to really understand the action. Uh, therefore, I am very in favor of uh, programming it to uh, relax a bit uh, during uh, direction meetings where I sit in because I'm quite tired. Ah, that's um, <laughs> fascinating as always. Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much for telling us about that. Uh, ladies and gents, it's time to go once again into the opera. So I'm just going to get her on off uh, with a glass of champagne, as always, and uh, vodka that I keep under the seat. And uh, while I skid her on off to my seat, I will leave you with a little clip of what's going on backstage, all the many thousands and millions and trillions of people who are all going into this illustrious and professional production at the opera. Right, so here we are. Um, almost everyone has taken their seat. It happened almost instantaneously. And uh, the orchestra, I know they are getting ready to tune up their instruments, even though it never helps, but they do it anyway. <laughs> and uh, the conductor, I'm sure, is just having a last relaxation ses session with the soprano backstage. Um, <laughs> they do this nightly. We're not really sure what happens there, but she sings better, and he's relaxed, and he can be a real pain in the ass. So we just look the other way. And uh, anyway, they're grown adults and they can enter into whatever kind of relationship they want to. Anyway, so um, here we are. Uh, we're about to start. You're going to see Janacek's uh, Janufa once again. This is an opera about extremely fucked up people. They are um, all related to one another. 
and they are all basically having sex with each other. And then, uh, of course, somebody wants to kill somebody else, uh, somebody gets maimed, uh, people who maim each other fall in love, or get married, or both. And uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful story. Um, with lots of drama, lots of notes. Janacek was a composer who through composed, I don't know if any of you are familiar with works of Wagner, they are just one unending stream of music. And uh, that is very similar to uh, how Janacek writes. It's just noise from beginning to end. And um, uh, in Yanufa that is much the same deal. It's difficult to know when the singers are supposed to start, so very often this is great because they prepare less and they simply start whenever they feel ready. And then the music, it doesn't really change all that much uh, because there's no melody, so they can simply continue to sing, and that's really wonderful. Um, and they, everyone appreciates this, and the audience can never tell the difference. Um, this is an opera in the Czech language, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, can I get a, a round of applause for any, any Czech language speakers in the audience tonight? Any check like okay, thank God. So um, <laughs> this is actually a very, very difficult language, and of course, our singers speak Czech professionally, and uh, they pronounce everything absolutely correctly, as I'm sure <laughs> you can imagine. Um, uh, this is the life of the modern opera singer, ladies and gents. You have to speak English and French and Italian and German and Czech and I'm sure there are other languages as well. Russian. It's all there. You have to really be a polyglot or at least convincingly fake your way through it. And um, that's what we do. We, what we do here. We like to convincingly fake our way through everything. And uh, we'll be doing that as well in just a moment here. Um, I'm just going to, uh, to uh, relax and lean back against the railing. I've, uh, I feel a bit dizzy, as I always do, because I, I had uh, two glasses of champagne and three shots of vodka. Oh, thank God. Okay, they're coming in, so I can, I can sit down. Okay. <laughs>
sons. They're both dead. One of them married a woman who had, wait a minute, had this one. That was the first, yeah, wait, yeah, that was the grandson. And then she, uh, right. And then the, I don't know where the mother is, but the father's definitely dead. And uh, then I think the father after the, but after the first, no, the first wife, his mother died, and then he married the second wife. I think that's the second wife, but they're not really, I'm not sure. Anyway, but they, <laughs> so this one, uh, and so, but he's uh, favored, and then the other son of her married his, no, yeah, married his mom, and then they, they had him, and he's kind of a twerp, and uh, he, everyone loves him. She loves him especially. Oh, my grandson so special to me. But he's kind of an ass. And this one's kind of a nerd. He's kind of, they're both kind of assholes, really. And then, and then her, she also is in this family. And they, uh, they, uh, her mother died. And so she, who is the second wife of someone else, she became her foster mother. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> and, and so uh, the, these three are all related and also all in love as one does in Bohemia in whatever century this is supposed to be. And uh, yeah, so uh, she's old. She's going to sit here on the recliner for a while and be old. She doesn't really have all that much to say other than whatever granny things one says. And this guy, yeah, he's not there yet because uh, there's... There's a problem, yeah. He's uh, he's off he's off stage actually, because and he also. So they're having a moment because there's uh, they're conscripting the local boys, and uh, there's a big discussion as to whether this guy gets conscripted because uh, she they have thing. Okay, so he's in love with her, very much, and he's always taunting her, 
uh, and then, but he, she loves him, but he's like with all the chicks in the town, like he's got a lot of them, and, uh, but then uh, she, but she does get knocked up, so she's pregnant actually, ladies and gentlemen, she's pregnant right now, uh, but she's, <laughs> she's not showing, but she's freaking out, because if he gets conscripted, then they can't get married, she's not really worried about like whether he gets killed, no, she's worried about whether he gets conscripted, and then she starts to show before they can have the wedding. Yeah. So uh, they're finding out now, uh, off stage somewhere else. All these guys that uh, oh, they actually didn't get conscripted. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> So that was in fact a celebration, they're all drunk, he's wasted, he comes in, Oh, darling, don't be drunk again, it's so unbecoming. Fuck you, bitch, don't tell me what to do. That's basically how it goes. And, um, and so he's like, whatever, dude, I'll just do what I want, it's my life, cousin. And uh, he's like, oh shit, seriously, you didn't get conscripted? So I can't actually keep uh, hitting on my cousin who doesn't like me at all and whom I'm constantly making totally uncomfortable and who I will later marry. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's true. He's, oh, thank goodness, I'm so glad. This guy who is such a dick to me. Oh, thank God, he didn't get conscripted and finally I can talk him into marrying me because there's no abortion in the Czech Republic at this time. And anyway, I'm Catholic. And so that's happening. And he's, of course, totally irritated by this, and, wait, let me see what song I have next. Yeah, no, not yet. So, uh, they're, <laughs> so they're doing that, and he, uh, he's off being drunk some more, and hitting on some more local girls. She's totally out of it, and uh, she is the foster mother, and she's also doing whatever business. She's, like, really important in the village, so she's, like, doing stuff. And, uh, um... Actually, I think she is the judge, in fact. She is in charge of judging people. So uh, that's very important for later. And so, um, <laughs> so he is so upset by this, and he's so hurt, and he's like constantly making fun of her and trying to like irritate her because, you know, he's like 12. Actually, he's not. He's like 21, but he acts like a child. So, um, you know, he's always like pulling her hair basically. Oh, look, he has a knife. Why does he have a knife? Oh, well, because he's just ha 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 fooling around and shit. And then, uh, yeah, so then he cuts her face. Let me see, I have some blood around her somewhere. Yeah, this should do it. So, he cuts her face, and she is like horribly disfigured. And, uh, and that's a problem because, you know, she's like kind of okay looking and uh, uh, that's the only thing she's got going for her. She definitely isn't educated or smart or clever or anything else. She's just kind of cute. Um, and so now basically this was a big accident but it leads to a whole lot of misunderstanding. Yeah, and then there's a big, uh, there's a big song. Everyone comes down. They all join in. And uh, for some reason, uh, it's time for a lecture. And she, Janicek, I think he was having a stroke when he wrote this part. Because basically, um, it's just one sentence over and over and over, and everyone says it. Uh, it's, every couple has trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and that sounds like this. Hold on to your hats. <laughs>
We totally agree with you. Also me. Also I agree with this, and I will repeat it ten times. Certainly I agree with this. She's Koshnitska. Grandmother. It's generally possible to tell the female characters apart in the song, but this one hasn't quite ruined her voice yet. This one has just ruined her voice, and this one ruined her voice 20 years ago. The fruit psychic, reading her fruits every night at eight. Oh, 
the Myers-Briggs contraction. So, yeah. Whew. So, ladies and gentlemen, time has passed. Uh, lots happened here, actually. Whew, yeah, lots happened because um, someone had a baby. Meanwhile, uh, she popped it out, as does happen, and uh, yeah, you get out of here, and uh, let's see, I think we need to have some light. So, uh, Brian, are you ready? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to do it good this time? Yeah. Okay. One. Two. <laughs> so, Brian needs a hard hand, ladies and gentlemen. But just sometimes. Uh, 
Yeah, so uh, there was there was uh, baby havings and uh, lots of this shit happened. Uh, little baby, I happen to have a baby here. Baby. <laughs> And the baby is, as usual, asleep outside in the snow. Uh, Yanufa has been hiding away here. This is actually her home. This is her, her little, her mill. This is her mill. It's all hers. All belongs to her. She's the bitch in charge. And uh, she has been so horrified by what's happened. I mean, as you can guess, uh, they didn't get married. And he's still fucking around. And, uh, but the, it's okay because she uh, made up this great cover story that everyone believes, because sure they do, which is that um, she is in Vienna. Yeah. Peasant girl from the Czech Republic went to Vienna just for no reason. And she's been there for nine months. How oh, about a coincidence? And now she's back. And uh, nobody knows about the baby. And uh, the libretto makes a great point of, of uh, telling us that she actually spent the entire nine months praying for the baby to die <laughs> and uh, praying for horrible things to happen to that child. She prayed for a miscarriage, then she prayed that it would die in childbirth, then now she's praying that it just spontaneously dies, and she's getting a little upset. And the problem is that uh, this is a huge shame, she thinks, and of course it is in this little village, that uh, her daughter, her foster daughter, who she has raised to be so smart and who even reads, uh, so she can't, she, it, it would be such a shame for her because she wants her to get married. Of course, that's the best thing that she can imagine, that she gets married. And uh, you can't get married if you've already popped one out. And uh, so she, this is why she's hoping that the baby dies. And she just kind of goes along with the whole plan. And uh, now the, the ruse is up, they've decided that, okay, now it's okay to be back from Vienna again. And, um, and she has uh, um, asked the father to show up, and the father did not show up. What a surprise. He did offer lots of money, which was, of course, a huge insult, and so they didn't accept. Anyway, so um, at this very moment, she is sleeping. There's a luxurious bedroom back here, and she's sleeping. And she is freaking out. The baby is very unprotected. What could happen? Nothing. Who would harm a baby? And so, and so the mother is uh, freaking out more and more. She can barely stand it because she's very important in this town. And she doesn't want Yanufa to have even worse prospects than she already does by having embarrassed herself with an asshole. And uh, so she's um, going to sing something terrible. And uh, yeah, and I'll just tell you what happens afterwards.
she goes and freaks the hell out because that sucks. She couldn't quite contain herself. She did what she did. Meanwhile, Yanuka woke up from her nap and she's looking for her mommy. She actually calls her mommy and she's also looking for her son. Oh, what's going to happen now? And 
Sinn. <laughs> um, to help everyone understand what's happening here, we decided to have a little, a little green room session. Let's try to shed some light on this horrible opera. So, here we are. They were actually uh, sworn enemies. They did a Rosen Cavalier together, and they hate each other ever since then. Um, so, tell me, uh, Czech, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't speak Czech, though, do you? No, 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 no. It's actually not necessary for any singer to actually speak Czech. We, um, we have coaches for that. They uh, shape our every syllable. Um, into the proper sounding word, and we actually have no idea what we're saying at any given time. But um, we find that to be uh, unnecessary, actually, to our trade. Ah, oh, interesting. And who do you um, who do you have to coach you on these on these uh, very difficult to wrap your tongue around words? Well, I have a coach. Um, we all do. I have two coaches actually. They're both from Czech. Uh, uh, sorry, the Czech Republic. Um, and. Uh, Actually, it's kind of funny, they, they're uh, a couple, and one is from the Czech Republic, and the other one is from uh, uh, Slovenia, and they're constantly giving me conflicting advice about my pronunciation. I think they're just trying to keep me in, uh, in their, uh, under control so that I keep giving them money. And it works, because I see them religiously uh, in preparing for this particular role. I saw um, each of them at least once a day. That really happened. Ah, well, this, you must get a lot of money for that from the theater or from, I don't know, where do you, how do you afford that? It must be quite expensive. Yes, that is actually quite expensive. Um, in fact, I put all of my money into it, and um, I got very thin uh, in the preparation process for this role because I couldn't afford to eat anymore. But, you know, it's art, and I'm willing to starve for it, as I'm sure you are as well. Yeah, literally. I mean, I get that totally. I would also have done the same thing because it's much more important than you can that you can pronounce the words on stage, spending your own money to do so, than to be able to eat a grilled cheese sandwich. Yes, absolutely. I'm so glad that you understand. And um, so, uh, because you're spending all your all your time coaching the language, how do you also work on the the other dramatical aspects of the role? I'm sure it's very demanding. And this, of course, is is known for being an extremely uh, theatrically and uh, dramatically demanding role. So how do you prepare for that? Ah, well, funny you ask. Um, I've actually asked my, my colleague in to help us demonstrate a few things. Um, I can't actually bend over because I'm wearing a corset, and if I were to do that, uh, my costume would uh, explode, and I really don't have time for that right now. So um, I've invited um, my co-star here to, to demonstrate a few things about how we deal with, with the dramatic challenges of a role. Oh, hello, hi. Oh, okay, good. Um, so tell us, uh, uh, show, why don't you show her what, how, how we prepare? Oh yeah, sure. Um, we actually have, um, uh, for very demanding roles like this, a repertoire of about four or five different positions that we uh, take. Um, and these are known to all uh, opera goers. Um, I'm sure you've seen them as well. <laughs> um, they're all very standard um, opera positions. And we uh, practice for many, many years uh, learning how to um, adapt each one to each role. So for example, um, if I am singing a very, a very loud demanding note and in a pleading tone, it would be this. And um, if I were to sing a very loud, demanding note in a very um, victorious way, it would be this. <laughs> and you can, I'm sure you can see the fine difference there. Oh yes, it, it's a huge, huge difference. I'm sure that colors every tone that you sing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I mean, there are more, more uh, positions. There's also this one, <laughs> which is very common for men. And then for women, it tends to be this one, because the woman has to look down and be subservient. And that's what we do. 
oh. <laughs> and um, so there, there are all these different positions that we that we adopt, and uh, yeah, and uh, that's that's how we make the magic on stage. Well, that's extremely interesting. Thank you so much for taking the time out to share that with us. I know uh, the audience uh, appreciates getting a little behind the scenes look at all these little secrets that you use, and uh, they'll be looking much more critically uh, at uh, the rest of the opera. Yes, I'm sure they will. Okay, well, thanks so much for your time. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, the opera continues, and now, right, I'll do it one hand at a time this time. <laughs> and uh, they uh, <coughs> they've all kind of gotten over all the drama of the previous acts and yeah so this guy found someone else to marry uh, but he's not on stage yet sorry um, so this guy found out about the baby and do you know what he said? He said, I don't care. I love her anyway. And she was like, oh my god, that's so great. Because uh, you maimed me and teased me for my entire life. And you're my cousin. But I love you too. Okay, great. I mean, I love you enough for our required purposes. Yeah, so great. Fantastic. So, and um, also that gives him the opportunity to inherit some of this. Because also, oh, I forgot to mention, he is not standing to inherit any of this. He's completely cut out. That's probably why he's so angry. I should have mentioned that earlier. But um, anyway, so the mother is having a very, very long and gradual nervous breakdown because she killed a baby. And she's not sleeping well. She's having lots of night nightmares and not eating. She's a nervous wreck. Um, but nevertheless, uh, it's time for a wedding. And... Uh, She's wearing a very simple dress. <laughs> um, and she's uh, very excitedly looking forward to this wonderful day. There are other guests who are appearing, coming in from uh, next door or whatever. And, uh, like, let's say she also comes to the wedding. And so the wedding guests come in. This guy here, the guy who is not marrying her, he's going to marry the mayor's daughter. And he's also there now. And they're all watching this. women in town and they have they make a club and then they just go from village to village singing and then people get the money and meanwhile I'm 
somebody at least. She has no reason to suspect that her mother is acting so very, very strangely because she killed her baby. This doesn't even occur to her, even though she's clearly having a nervous breakdown. So, um, uh, that's all happening. And then, uh, for some reason, some guys go, the ice cutters, there was guys cutting ice for the beer garden, because sure there's a beer garden. Let's just say she's also a dude. So they go down. We're cutting ice for the beer garden. Oh my god, there's a fucking baby in there! What? Yes! Oh my god, I see it too! What? What? And then they run back up. We found a baby in the river! It's crazy! What is going on here? Who put a baby in the icy river? Of course it's dead! And everyone's like, what? 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 Oh my god, what? And she's like, she has a bad feeling. She's really worried about that. And then these guys bring the baby up. And she's like, oh my god, oh my god, that is my baby, that is in fact my baby, and it's dead, and why is it in the river, I don't understand, there, now I have a lot more questions than that I didn't have any questions before. And so that happens, and uh, she's like, you know what, I can't take it anymore, I have to tell you. Uh, no, and not yet, because everyone's like, oh, she did it, she did it, she killed her baby, and she's like, no, I did not, I definitely did not, I love my baby, and they're like, oh, you had a baby? And then, um, <laughs> so that, there's that, and then, uh, so she's just, uh, she can't even take it anymore, she's lying down for uh, sadness, and she's like, okay, everybody stop, before you put my daughter in jail, because that would be horrible, I have a confession to make, I actually killed the baby, and so she sings that. And this little song, I like to hear it, here it goes. to kill her, 
And so she, the, her mother offers to do that on her own. She offers to like step her own damn self into the icy river. Uh, but Yanufa, of course, well, she's not really in the way to get married anymore. So, um, so Yanufa uh, decides, you know what? It's okay that you tried to kill my baby, and in fact that you did. It's all right, because you know what? I forgive you. <laughs> and here's the song about that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 